So we're going to run an investigation on the laws of logarithm. What is a logarithm? It's an exponent, right? Okay. So log base 2 of 2 says 2 to the what is 2? 1. 2 to the 1. Log base 2 of 4? Log base 2 of 8? 3. 4. 5. Okay, it's safe. Okay. So logarithm. <coughs> the logarithm, maybe I can say it slowly, a logarithm, is an exponent. It's the exponent that we raise the base. What if there's no base written there? What if that just said log 2? What would the base be? Base 10. So using the above table, use the table, use the above values to help you complete the following. So the first one is done. Log base 2 of 4 plus log base 2 of 8. So you look in the table, log base 2 of 4 is 2, log base 2 of 8 is 3, 2 plus 3 is 5, and 5, so now we look back up at the number and say that's log base 2 of 32. Holy crap. Okay? And so basically you're just going to ask, kind of fill this out, and then we're going to look for a pattern in this table, right? So a lot of math is done by looking for patterns. <coughs> Try some different stuff out. We're going to say, hey, is there a pattern going on here? And if there is, then we try and figure, well, can we prove that? Looking for pattern, what kind of reasoning is that? Think back. Pattern. Yeah. <laughs> what kind of reasoning does Sherlock Holmes use? Sherlock Holmes? Investigation. No. It's deductive. What's the other reasoning? Inductive. Right. So looking for a pattern is inductive reasoning. Yeah. Right. So you're going to do you're going to fill this in. You say, okay, let's look for a pattern in here. Right? Wait, then what's deductive? Deductive would be doing a general proof of this. Right? To show that it's true in all cases, not just for log base 2 and not just for these numbers. All right, so what do we got? So looking up above, right, we're just filling this in. And I'm just going to pause this because, you know, we only have one empty desk. Okay, so that's filling in the table, right? So for each of the above statements, compare the first expression, so you're looking at this, with the last expression, and you're looking at this. And you're saying, so... What did we do with log base 2 of 2 and log base 30, log base 2 of 32? How did we use 2 and 32 to get 64? Multiply them, right? Does that work here? So what's 8 times 16? 128. What's 32 times 16? 512, right. Okay. So what's log base 2 of 2 plus log base 2 of 8? What's that going to be equal to? 16. Log base 2 is 16 plus log base 2 of 4 is log base 2? 64. Log base 2 8 plus log base 2 8 is? 64 again. Log base 2 2 plus log base 2 64? Alright, so what's going on here? So, log base A of capital M plus log base A are those A's? Yeah, of N is the log base A of M times N, right? M N. Or the log base A of what is equal to log base A of M plus log base A of N. M N, right? So it says if you are, and the, the big thing here is the base has to be the same. So if you are adding up individual logs with the same base, you can simplify it and just do it as the log with that base of the product. So the sum of individual logs is the log of a product. Or the log of a product is equal to the sum of the individual logs. So the sum of the logs of two numbers is equal to the log of the... All right, I said it's so actually a product. Or the log of the product of two numbers. That could be two numbers, could be two expressions, right? Just that it's a product is equal to the sum of the logs 
of the two number. Use your rule to express log base 2 of 64 as the sum of two logs in as many ways as possible. One has been completed for you. So you take 64, that's part of right? what we're going to end up with. Log base 2 of 64. So I could say, well, 64 is 1 times 64, or it's what? Two times thirty-two, right? And what we're doing is just thinking, what's the product? The product is two times thirty-two. But how do I write that? I'm writing it as a sum, so it's log base two of two plus thirty-two. Okay. So do a few more. I'll give you your, your souvenir formula sheet. Now, now you deserve a formula sheet. So this is kind of a. Not real, not well photocopy, but somewhat blown up version of the sheet. It's just a little bit bigger than the one that you're going to get on the diploma. So this is yours to keep. Put your name on it. If you want to write anything on here, so if you want to make notes about this formula is this or that or you know also this, um, these are the ones you get. So if you don't get it, you either have to memorize it or they'll give it to you. Okay. So it's something like pH. Um, they'll give that to you, right? You won't have to memorize that. It's something like area of a triangle, there's an expectation that you know the formula for area of a triangle. Okay. So what's on here? Most of these you haven't seen yet, right? So don't worry about it. We'll be covering through all of them. But the laws of logarithms are on here. That's why this is a good time to give this to you. So that you'll know, all right, these are the formulas that I'm going to get to work with. Okay, so we should be able to fill in a few more. What else? Log base 2 of 64 is? 16 and 4, so log base 2 of 4 plus log base 2 of 16. What else? 8 and 8. Okay, so now what we're really doing is going from 64 to 8 times 8 and taking that. So that's a product, so I can write that as the sum of the individual logs, log base 2 of 8 plus log base 2 of 8. All right, any other ways? We just end up reversing through the table, right? We go 16 times 4 and then 32 times 2 and then 64 times 1. So there'd be nothing new. Speaking of nothing new, there's nothing on that page. Okay. That's the bottom of that first page, right? Okay, so move to the top. Differences of logs. So, using the same values from part A, complete the following. All right, now I'm going to pause this because... Okay, so that's the filled-in version of this exercise. Let's call it an exercise. Any mistakes up there? Fix them now if there are any. For each of the above statements, compare, compare the first expression, this or this, with the last expression. And use your results to predict the following. So what would log base 2 of 32 minus log base 2 of 2 be? Minus, not plus. Plus we would multiply. What are we doing here? What do you do with 128 and 64 to get a 2? What do you do with 32 and 4 to get an 8? What are you going to do with 32 and 2? What are you going to get? What's this next one? 256 minus log base 2 of 4. 64. 128 and 8. 512 and 32. Take your word for it. I don't have a calculator. From your investigation, okay, if I have the difference between two logs, so log base A of M minus log base A of N can be expressed as a single log, what do I do with M and N? Divide. So it's M divided by N. Or, what goes in here? 
m divided by m. Now, if you look at your formula sheet, you're given one of these, right? You're given log base a, oops, could they use b? If you're given log base b of m over n, so they give you the right one, the one that's on the right side, is equal to log base b, well, we're using a's, they're using b, but it's the difference between the logs. So the difference of the logs of two numbers, this guy, difference of two logs is equal to the log of the, what do you call that? It starts with a q. Quotient. The log of the blank of is equal to the so if we have a difference between two logs, we combine them into a single log, we do the quotient. If we start off with the log of the quotient, then it's equal to the difference. Logs of powers. To determine the log of a power, we can do the following. So we've got log base 3 of 2 to the power of 5. Right? So what does 2 to the 5th mean? It means multiply 2 by itself 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 times. Now, that's a product. What do we do with the log of a product? We split it up and say it's the sum of the individual logs. Right? It doesn't only have to be two things multiplied. You can multiply as many things together as you want. So it's log base 3 of 2 plus log. How many times is this occurring? <coughs> five times, right? So it's 5 times log base 3 of 2. OK, let's try this with log base 6 of 4 cubed. So it's log base 6, and we expand 4 cubed, right? It's 4 times 4 times 4. Since we have the product, the log of a product is the sum of the individual logs. And how many of them are there? How many log base 6 of 4 are there? 3, right? So multiplication is just repeated addition, right? So it's like, okay, I got three of these things being added, so there are three log base 6 of 4. Okay, so you try it with log base 5 of 7 to the 4. Right, so you want to just okay, let's run through the same operation. So using inductive reasoning, that is looking for a pattern, we see that if I have log base A of m to the power n, I can write that as base A of m to the n, how can I write that? n, so we take the power and move it out front, n times log base A of m. So the log of a power is equal to the blank times the log of the base of the power. So what goes in the blank? What are we going to call this thing? The exponent, right? We just did a unit on exponential, so it's the exponent. So the log of a power is equal to the exponent. That's actually a really handy thing. You don't recognize it yet. Well, how would we apply that? And we will apply that, but not, not so much today. We'll just work on kind of simplifying it today, and then we'll say, hey, we can solve problems we could never solve before by using this log of a power. 
We'll leave that. We've got to have something to look forward to. Yeah. <laughs> Not all at once. Don't spoil it for us. Okay, so we've used inductive reasoning really to show that the laws are true, right? To prove deductively that log base 10, so we'll just say log, you know, y, y is, or prove that log of 12 plus log of 2, prove. So you can just turn to the back side of that page, right? Or you can you know, go into your notebook or you, know, you can uh, get your camera out and just take pictures of each individual page. You can wait for it to go up online and print it off. Do many things. Okay, so we're going to prove this, right? So we're going to start by saying this. We're going to say let x equal log 12. And let y equal log 2. So if we take x is equal to log 12, that's logarithmic form, we can change that to exponential form. What is it going to become? So what's the base? 10. What's the exponent? What's a logarithm? It's an exponent. What's the exponent? X. 10 to the x is equal to 12. So we can say 10 to the x is equal to 12. What if we do the same idea here? What are we going to say? 10 to the y is equal to 2. Don't get ahead of yourself. Now, we wanted log 12 plus log 2, right? Now, we know that when we sum individual logs, it's the same as the what? So the sum of individual logs, what do we do for summing? We multiply them, right? So we're going to say, all right, what's 10 to the x times 10 to the y? Got powers with the same base. What do we do to the exponent? We add. So 10 to the x times 10 to the y is equal to 10 to the x plus y. All right, but what's 10 to the x plus y? What's 10 to the x? It's equal to 12. What's 10 to the y? 2. So this is 12 times 2, which is equal to what? 24. So this expression up here, since we know that this is this, and this is this, then these guys have to be the same, right? That means this is this. So it means that 10 to the x plus y is equal to 24. And now we can change that. Okay, so we've got we've got this expression here, right? We say 10 to the x plus y is equal to 24. That's in exponential form. I can write it in logarithmic form, right? So I would say log, what's the base? 10, so I'm not going to write it. What's the value that we end up with? 24. And what's that equal to? What's a logarithm? It's an exponent. What's the exponent in this expression? x plus y. So log 24 is equal to x plus y. Okay. So there's the more deductive proof, right? Inductive was looking at patterns and saying, hey, when this happens, it happens. And deductively, it's saying, we're doing a more general proof of why log base, uh, the log, sorry, of 12 plus the log of 2 is equal to the log of 24, right? Because what's a logarithm? It's just an exponent. When I 
uh, add exponents together. What operation are we doing? We're multiplying, right? Multiply powers with the same base, you add the exponents. Okay, what are these guys? These guys are just exponents, so the x and the y here, right? They're really just exponents, so you just add them together. When you add exponents, what are you doing? You're multiplying the base. Don't worry, you don't have to know to do that. It's just that's nah, good to see. Okay, so let's just do 115 examples, and maybe a few. Let's just do a few examples. So what kind of stuff can they ask you to do? Now, some stuff they ask you to do might be doable on a calculator, and then a lot of the questions we write are written such that you can't do them on a calculator, right? So that there has to be, because it's checking, do you actually understand what's happening in logs? Do you know these logs? Okay, they're on your formula sheet. Can you apply them is what we're looking for. Right? So sometimes we just use straight numbers, in which case you could just shortcut that with a calculator. Right? And we'll look at those strategies, right? given this question. So we're going to go through. There is the January 2013 diploma, the actual real diploma that was given, is posted online. Okay? What we're going to do towards the end in June is we'll go through that step by step. Right? We'll look at each question. We'll say, how, how can we handle this? Can we do it on our calculator? or how are we going to do this particular question, right? And so we'll go through every question. We'll do each one step by step. Um, you'll have the field tests, which you can use to replace midterm coming up, or 10 quizzes. And uh, then we'll do that three-hour field test, which won't, it can't count for anything because your marks will be in, but we'll do that on the day of the chem exam and then, you know, just that give you practice with a, hey, I'm going to write one of these, you know, the next day or in a couple of days. So that you'll have an idea as to what you might see. Okay, write each expression. Write each expression as a single logarithm. So, log base 5 of 12 plus log base 5 of 4 is equal to what? Go to your formula sheet if you need to. So the sum of individual logs is the same as the, yeah, the log of the product, right? So to write it as a single log, we go, well, it's log base 5 of 12 times 4, which is log base 5 of 48. So that's what we mean by write it as a single log, right? Log base 5 of 48 is a single log, right? The other one is a sum. Log base 7 of 8 minus log base 7 of 2 is equal to Log base 7 of? Yeah. Well, you said 4, then somebody else said something different, and you said, wait, I'm going to change. I could be wrong. Okay, the log of a difference is the log of a quotient. Okay, so really all you do is just pull your formula sheet, just look at it, and say, okay, they show this. I need to write it like this, which then becomes... Wait, so we need to track you, like, divide them? That's right. When you subtract, you like divide, and when you like add, you like multiply. No. So adding individual logs, you take the log of the product, and when you take the difference, it works both ways, right? But the formula sheet only shows you one way, but you just can read it backwards, right? You can go from the left side to the right side, or the right side to the left side. So the log of a product is the sum of the individual logs. If I have the sum of individual logs, I can combine them into a single log by doing a product, okay. and then vice versa. What if I have a few of these? Okay, so how are we going to combine these three things together? So we're adding and subtracting. What do I do with the two that I'm adding? Add, multiply. multiply. So it's going to be 10 times 4. And we like 
Can we divide the picture? Okay. <laughs> oh, God. Do you see a find in grade 12 English for saying like? I mean, unless it was used like in context, like, you know. All right, so what is that? Eight. Okay, so 10 times 4 divided by 5 is 8. That's what you have to do, right? Because you have to write log base 3 of 8. Now, a way that we can ask this where you can't use a calculator to evaluate is just use letters. So I could say log base 3 of x plus log base 3 of y minus log base 3 of z expressed as a single log and give you four choices, one of which would be x times y over z, one of which would be x plus y over z, you know, just four variations using x, y, and z. Um, now you could sort of check that on your calculator because you could just say, right, let me pick values for x, y, and z and then try them out. Okay. Just be aware that it might work in more than one of the things that you do, depending on values you choose. But. Write as a single log Then evaluate. Okay, so log base 6 of 2. What is log base 6 of 2? 6 to the power of what gives you 2? Between 0 and 1, right? 6 to the 0 gives me 1, and 6 to the 1 gives me 6. So it's between 0 and 1. It's closer to but I don't know what that value is. Plus log base 6 of 18. So what's that equal to? So what do we do with the 2 and the 18? We multiply them. So what's 2 times 18? What's log base 6 of 36? 6 to the what is 36? 6. 2. 2. Okay. Okay. There is a way to do that on your calculator, but seriously, if you need to do that on your calculator, you need a little more help than I can give you. Okay, so log base 6 of 36, 6 squared or 2. Uh, so it tells you, if you have an expression, you can't work these out individually. You can plug them into your calculator. And it says if you go to, well, okay, we can't do a base 6 log down. Right? But, so, okay, that, that's not going to work. There is a way that you can do base 6 log, but we're not there yet. Log base 9 of 162 minus log base 9 of 2. Okay, so use the laws of logs. Work that out. Just you know, run the table. Work it right to left. Say, okay, this is what I'm going to do, and this is what I'm going to get, and then this is what I evaluated to. Evaluate it to. So it evaluates 2. So 9 to the 2. 9 squared is 81. All right. Whatever this next thing is, it's got to come out as a... <laughs> got to... <laughs> and actually, log... <laughs> All right, come on. That that's 162. Like I I know my writing's not great, but I think most people would say that's 162. Uh, log 25 plus log 4. What's the base? 10. 10. Okay. It's adding. What do we do? It's 25. This is one you could work out on your calculator. What's 25 times 4? Is that equal to? Is everything else equal to? It's 2 as well. Okay. Now, on your calculator, you could actually go log 25, close bracket, plus log 4, close the bracket or not, personal preference, enter, and you're going to get 2. Okay. So you can try that on your calculator, because it's a base 10 log, and that's what our calculator does, it's base 10 log. Uh, write each expression as a single log without a coefficient.
without a coefficient. So coefficient is the number in front here. It's that 2. So 2 times log base 5 of 12. So how do we get rid of the coefficient? That wouldn't be a good idea. Okay. If it were an equation, you could divide both sides by 2. It's not an equation. So where does the 2 go? Becomes an exponent on the 12. So it becomes 12 to the power of 2, which is 144. So it's log base 5 of 12 squared. So a power, an exponent moves out front, or a number out front moves up and becomes an exponent of the thing of which you're taking the log, right? The value that you would get. Okay. Okay. Now, questions you're going to get are going to combine all three laws, right? Like you might have to, there's powers in there, and there could be a sum, and there could be a difference, and there could be powers on each one of them. You can't use the sum or the difference, the product quotient. You can't do that on something like 2 log base 512. So if you were going to then add that to something else, you would first have to go from this form to this. Okay. So if there's a coefficient, you can't do any of the laws, right? The, the laws say it's just a log by itself. There can't be a number in front. Anyway, so let's just do a few of these. So 3 log base 7 of 4. And 1 half ln or log. No. Okay, so work those out. After yesterday, you figured out, hey, this log stuff isn't all that bad. And uh, so a couple of things happen at this point. The material gets a little bit easier, a little more understandable. And it's time to go back and fix up anything from before prior to the midterm, right? OK, so what is this? Log base 7. 3 to the power of 4, and 3 to the 4th is, oh, 4 to the power of 3. 4 cubed is 64. This is ln of 9 to the, and what's an exponent of 1 half to? Square root, right? So 9 to the half is square root of 9, which is 3. Okay. Wow, that's just to go forward by itself. Did I touch it? Okay, so a few more. Uh, log 4 plus 2 log 5. Okay, so we can't do anything as long as that 2 is there, right? So we're just going to write, actually, let's just go down. Go down. Equals. Okay, so log 4, log 4. What do we do with the 2 log 5? Becomes log of 5 squared. What's 5 squared? 25. So we got log 4 plus log 25. When I add logs, what do I do? Multiply. So it's the log of? 4 times 25. 4 times 25 is? And the log of 100 is? 2. two right? Because what? <laughs> I don't know if this thing is rigged, so the answer can't always be 2.
Okay. Yeah. I, I was just working it out to figure out what the answer was, and I think I know. Yeah. You should still show the work, because I'll give you five in a row on the test now. So your first step is we don't touch log base 6 of 144, but this becomes... Base four of eight plus one half Still write it down. Good thing to. Otherwise, what you find is you sit down on a task and you start drawing blanks. Yeah. could write two times log base 4 of 8, but that doesn't really help, right? Because I, I don't know what log base 4 of 8 is, and as of yet, we don't have a way to work it out. But if I then say, well, it's the sum of logs, so that's the log of a product, then we can work it out. Pretty close. Yeah. Do you see the grass is black and blue or white and gold? Just saying, like, should I take your word about color? Okay, log 8 plus log 5. So uh, simplify and then evaluate. So you'll need a calculator. Round to nearest hundred, which is how many decimals? Two. Now, one thing you can do if you're not great at rounding or if you're kind of lousy at rounding, go into your calculator, go mode, and set it to two, right? It'll come up as float. You just move down a line, so it'll say float zero one two. Go to mode, set it to two, it'll round to the nearest hundred for you. The only thing is you've got to remember to set it back again, back to float or, you know, depending on what you have to round to. Because you can really mess things up, especially when you're rounding to the nearest whole number. And all of a sudden you're doing something, it's like, I'm supposed to get hundreds, and all it's giving me is a one, right? Because it's really like 0.75, but it's rounding to the nearest whole number. So if you run into any problems with your calculator during the exam, what are you going to do? 
Reset it. Reset it. Unless the problem is your batteries have run out in the case. Put your hand up and say something will bring you one. Okay. Uh, all right. Log 8 plus log 5 is equal to the log of. So, what do we do with the 8 and 5? Multiply. 8 times 5. 8 times 5 is 40. And log of 40, because your calculator is going log 40. 1.60. Rounded to two decimal places. Okay, so two more. And. Okay, so two more values. So what's the log of 21? 1.32. And what's the log of 16? Sorry? 1 1.2. 1.20. <laughs> For which one? It's it's lawn, not log. Okay. What is it? Two point seven seven. Okay. We agree. That's why when we do stuff, get the calculator out and do it. There's a couple of reasons for that. One is if you're gonna make mistakes and typing stuff in, now's a good time to do it as opposed to waiting until a Friday or a Wednesday or whatever the heck day we do quizzes anymore anyway. Which I did just because I knew I had a meeting yesterday. So.